So at this point, we created a contact form and we put it on screen somewhere just to see what it looked like. I put it in the About Us screen, but that's not really the place I want it at. I want it actually on a Contact Us page. This About Us page should have About Us information, and then the Contact page should have the contact information. So this will let us touch on two different things, revisions and then creating a new page. What I want to do is actually I don't want the contact form on the About Us page. I want to bring it back to what it was before I made this change. WordPress lets you uh, keep track of every change made to every page and then revert back to it in case you are not happy with a change. So let's see what that looks like. We'll go um, just so that we're looking at the same thing. We'll go back to the dashboard wherever you're at at the dashboard and we'll go back to Pages, all pages, and we had put this into the About Us page, <coughs> so if you didn't get that far, just wait a moment. We're going to create a Contact Us page in a moment, but before that, let's edit the About Us page. And I just had some gibberish there before I deleted that and added the form here. Let's say I did have a lot of meaningful stuff there and I don't remember what I wrote. I want to bring it back. Have you noticed on the top right corner of every page and post and, and product, I also I believe, there is revisions. WordPress is constantly keeping track of everything you've made a change to. So. Mine's got three. Yours may have one or two or five or whatever, but just click Browse where you see revisions. That changes your view to show you that the most current version of the page was edited 21 minutes ago. Version 3, 2, and 1. The more of these revisions that you make, the longer this bar will get. And I've dealt with some that the bar is you know, all the way across the screen because I've made so many revisions. But the way we handle this is you can either drag this slider or go to previous. Let's say I click previous. So the last time I worked on this, that's what it used to have on the left, and that's what I added on the right. And if I click previous again, the very first version was empty, and then I added the title and the text. If I go next on the right, again, there was a version before the start of today that had this title and this content, and now this version has a new content. So again, yours may be a little bit different, but you should be able to figure it out that you've got here these different states, sort of like these history states. And I want to take it back to the point where it had originally, <coughs> where it had this text. So you can go back and click Restore. Actually, I have to go back one more one more stage right there. Restore. If I didn't do it right, just go back a little bit further. There we go. So I restored it back. I brought back what I lost. In this case, obviously, just gibberish. But if it was real information, you could bring it back. You just have to go back. Uh, the trick is whatever you want to bring back should be on the right side. This is what it was. This is what it is now. What do you want to bring back? that. So now there's another state here, another history that if I go back here, I can bring back, actually maybe I do want the contact form again. So you restore that, and now you've got five versions of it. So whatever you're trying to bring back, make sure it's on the right side, and then restore it. I brought it back just to be safe, then I'll update it. I think it already saved it, but I'll just update it. And now my About Us page has the About Us info again. So did everyone get that? That's available for just about every page. 
there's some sort of revisions on there on the top right. Yeah, there's no there's no revision, so the number wouldn't wouldn't change. So just to make some notes here, every page and post WordPress creates revisions. We can use them as a super undo. Undo works at that moment. You're typing something, you don't like it, you undo, it takes it back. But undo goes away once you click that update. So that undo went away a week later when you actually wanted to bring something back. Revisions allow you to go back in time of your, of your writing. I don't believe that there is a default setting um, of a limit to these things. Uh, there was some site that I looked at a few weeks ago that uh, the client themselves also edits and I saw it had 45 revisions. So 45 changes throughout all of this time of a few years. Uh, and I don't believe also that it purges old revisions. Uh, like I said, there were 45 there and those were not made in like one week. Those were years. So that's, um, that's, a, that's a good safety net. WordPress uh, is going to remember everything that you did, so you can bring it back if you want. That reminds me then, in theory, then that takes up resources. That takes up resources in your site. It's taking up data space in your database. It has all of this data to keep track of that, in theory, could slow down WordPress. So that reminds me, there's a plugin that I looked up recently. I didn't know this until very recently myself. Is there a way to clean out these revisions? I don't want it to have it saved 50 revisions. And there, and there is one. Um, so let me add this other one. Let me look it up. I, I, it's, I just kind of found that a few months ago, so I don't have it memorized. Let me look it up, and then I'll tell you what it is. I believe it's simply called Clean Up Database. Clean Up Database. I'll know it when I see it. Yeah, I think it's this one. I was looking for one with a broom. It's that one. It used to have a real photo of a real broom, and it looks like they changed it to a drawing of a broom two weeks ago. Tech Banker. I think that's the right one. Let me let me confirm. I don't want to tell you the wrong one. Yeah, this is the one, <coughs> transient options. Okay, so if you search for clean up database, and it is finicky in the way you spell these things, because apparently if you search for contact form 7, with 7, no space between form and 7, it shows you different things than with contact form space 7. So this one is clean up database. And I found it here, WP cleanup optimizer, optimizing clean database by Tech Banker. Let me write this down in my notes, and then we'll install it, and we'll briefly look at how it works. But I've been using it on all of the clients and cleaning things up, and it does uh, it does clean things up. Yeah, that's the big problem of, about it. Of course, it, it's going to take away that safety net. Now. I, what I did was, for the client, I made a duplicator backup to make a copy of everything. Then I went through this optimizer, texted the site, it worked, moving on. If something was wrong, then I'd bring it back to that backup and then maybe not clean it. Yeah. 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 It, it does have options, as we'll see, but basically it is going to clean out all of the revisions for everything in the site. So this is to delete revisions and other craft. So I'm going to write here, be careful. 
because it'll take away that safety net. Uh, you want to restore back something that you wrote, unless you had it backed up on Duplicator, then it's gone. So I'll install it, and then activate it. Plugins are not consistent as to where they're installed or how you use them, but I do notice this one added a brand new icon for me, at least at the top, WP Cleanup Optimizer. And on the left it also did one, WP Cleanup Optimizer. And look at the dashboard. Yeah, they recently updated this very recently, so I need to look at what's new, but it does look different than I was using it. Uh, but here under the dashboard, there's a lot of stuff to look at, but basically, okay, which of these things do you want to do? It saw that, in my case, I've got a few auto-drafts that are kind of hanging around. I could empty those out. It's also showing there's revisions. There's 10 revisions in total. Notice I can't quite pick and choose which ones. I can empty those out transient objects are like a basic cache system used by WordPress. Clearing these options before a backup will help to save space. So it's just more space that is uh, freed up. This is WordPress itself creating like temporary files. Um, all of that will take up space when you make the duplicator backup. So these are all the possible things that could be cleaned out and there's a scheduler that you can set up how often to do this. Optimize your database also or not. Yeah, they've kind of supercharged this plugin, it seems. A little more complex than before, but powerful. Premium editions, what are they selling? The light version lets you do one site at a time. You get no technical support. Oh, you can't do the scheduler with the free one. Manage comments, trackbacks. Looks like with the more paid ones, you can. Yeah. So it starts to get, it starts to get full featured at the pro version. A one-time cost of fifteen pounds, and who knows how much that is? I don't know, a thousand dollars? Who knows? <laughs> so. No, it's probably like $28. Yeah, some some this are down there. Twenty-one seventy-two. Twenty-one Thank you for that. <laughs> As our current exchange rate is. So um, but that gives you one month of tech support. Um so, so, Manage trackbacks. trackbacks. <coughs> no trackbacks are like are backlinks, uh, links from someone else's site. Um, manage comments, the scheduler. Hmm. Or maybe it doesn't do that. Actually, maybe that's still too complex. Yeah. yeah. So I would. Um, get in contact with them. There is, um, I noticed up at the top, well even on the left, it's got feature requests. This is the author asking what would you like. Oh, and then there's also the help system. So maybe they're requesting. Do you, do you guys think you can create a version where I can pick and choose revisions per, per database? I mean per, per post. Anyway, the way I would use this, you don't have to do this because I, I have to see how the new version works now. Basically, I just go in and say, okay, I've got all of these revisions hanging around. I go back to the dashboard, I select revision, I guess, and then I click empty. Are you sure you want to clean? Sure. Again, you don't have to do this if you're not comfortable with it, but I'm going to go ahead and let it clean it. And then now it says successful, and now I have no more revisions on my pages. Let me confirm that by going back to my post of the about uh, on my page of the about screen, 
and let's see if there's any revisions. No revisions. So that's what that plugin does. You may think that's terrible, I can't go back anymore. That's true, but perhaps at a certain point your, your site gets very big and unwieldy with all of these things hanging around in the background. Uh, WordPress is great, but it's very easy for it to slow down. Lots of plugins, lots of themes, plugin conflicting with another plugin, lots of revisions, lots of pictures that you haven't used anymore. It can get very out of hand. So whatever you can use to kind of clean it up is good. And this new version of, of this plugin that I've discovered in the last few months, it seems to be very good and powerful. Make a note of it. And that's the, it's got a long, you saw that it had a huge name, but I simply searched for cleanup database and it gave me the one called WP Cleanup Optimizer Lite Edition by Tech Banker. Is there a way to do that manually? Say like there's only two out of five that you want to do, you have the lowest two, just to keep it going. I didn't quite I didn't quite see that. Actually, there is. When I was using the old version, you can tell it if it's older than you know seven weeks. I think it goes by time. If it's older than seven weeks, then delete those older ones. It's in there somewhere in the settings. General settings. Or maybe they moved it over to the higher paid level. Okay, so all of that is that uh, I wanted to bring uh, my about page back to the way it was, and instead what I want to do is create a brand new contact us page, and on that contact page I want to add the contact form. So I'm in the dashboard. One quick way to do this is if you hover over new at the top, we have posts, media page, product user. Wherever you're at in WordPress, even if you're on the front end, there is that new button there if you've never noticed it. So from the front end, I can quickly go to new page. Let's create a new page for our contact form. We'll call the, the page contact us. I'll write something here like get in touch with us. We'll get it back to you soon. So on and then I'll press enter. And in that next line, I need to copy and paste my short code. Again, it'd be nice if there was a button here that says insert form. It doesn't have it built into WordPress. So I have to go back. I'm going to open a new window. I'm going to right click on contact and select open in a new window or tab. Yeah, you want to right click on the contact link. And you should see open in a new open link in new window. I'm just trying to do that so that I can open a window here to show me my contact form short code so that I can paste it into my page.
So the trick here with the with this these contact forms is you have to copy the code and then paste it into the page where you need it. I notice I still added a little bit of text above the page, get in touch with us, and then I paste it in the short the, sh the short code, and then I'll click publish and view it. Visit site. Oh, actually, before we visit site, we need to put it in the menu, don't we? Mm -hmm. Victor, my um, left hand slide turned into icons instead of uh, text. What you need to do is your very last icon at the bottom looks like a little play button. Yeah. Click that, and that should open up the, the sidebar again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I made a page, I put the contact form on it, now I need to add that page to the menu. So that'll give us practice for that. I need to go back to Appearance, Menu, and then Menus. So here's how my menu is currently set up. On the left it shows that most recently I've worked with a contact us page, so I'll select that and then add to the menu. Well it, it should be... So we've got a brand new contact us. Yeah, you definitely have to save it or else it won't know that you've, uh, you've got it to work with yet. So once you've added contact, you can then rearrange it. Maybe I'll put about us and then below that, contact us. When you've edited your menu, you want to save it and then visit site. If it's not under recent, try to look under all oh. pages. Possibly, are you sure that you're putting a page and not a post? Well, you need to click it to select it and then click the Add to Menu. 
just go in and it's, you know, when it's added to the bottom, so they can move it up so that it's still in the house. Some things won't work because, for example, it didn't show up in my database anymore because it's not being tracked. And you still do be able to see, oh, it looks like it's a slip. And you can see some things like that. So scroll down. And then I can see from the other two things in the two things in the box. All right, so now after, after that, we've created a forum, added it to a page added the page to the menu, and now if I visit site, I've got about us, I've got contact us, if I click contact us, then uh, there's the text that I wrote, get in touch with us, and there's the form. Name, email, all of that. So they need a little bit of setup, but the rewards are, are very good in that you've got a contact form, and you can create multiple ones and add them to different pages. That client, Texcoco, there's a contact form on the main contact page, and there's a different contact form in the catering page. People are going to contact that company in a different way under the catering screen, so we're asking for different things. Uh, another thing that needs a little bit of setup is uh, is Jetpack, so we'll spend a little time on that. Any final questions on, on contact form? Okay, so we need to go back to the dashboard. <coughs> and then we'll go over to the plugins, add new. Add new plugins. And probably you'll see Jetpack right away here under the featured screen because it does have more than a million installations. And so I want Jetpack by WordPress. This is officially from the WordPress company. Technically, the parent company of WordPress is automatic. Um, because what's going to happen is we're going to link the infrastructure. Yeah. So we've got jetpack.com. Go ahead and click install now. And then once that's installed, remember to click update or uh, activate. So click the activate button or else it won't fully work. Okay, the way this plugin works, to take the full advantage of it, you need to create a free WordPress.com account. Yes, you will have still your website, which is the .org version. You're going to have your website on your server, victorsbakery.com or victorswebdesigns.net, whatever. I'm still going to have my domain that I buy over at GoDaddy, Bluehost, whatever. But I then sort of need to link Jetpack 
with um, dot com. Now my sidebar also shrank, and I. Uh, I don't know. There might be a bug there. But that'll give us practice to memorize what the icons mean. And so there's a brand new one. There's this it looks like a little yin yang kind of thing. And a few years ago, it looked like a jetpack. It looked like you know the Rocketeer's jetpack. Uh, but now it's this sort of more abstract kind of shape. Um, near the top, you should see the brand new jetpack icon. This is jetpack and settings. Just click on, just click on the jetpack icon for the moment. The, the first entry. Well, it should be on the left side after you activate it. It should be on the top left, one of the first ones. So then, what I get here is the jetpack screen. Um, it says improve your site with jetpack. Jetpack can help you secure your site, increase performance and traffic. And simply show you, or simply how you manage your site. So what we've got here is these sort of like big ideas, performance, traffic, and tools. Uh, Jetpack includes many other features that you can use to customize your site. These include contact forms. So there's a Jetpack contact form. I don't like it too much. I think it's a little limited. This contact form 7 is better. Tiled photo galleries are nice. It lets you upload a bunch of photos and make some nice galleries. Edit your CSS easier. Image carousels is another way to show off images and a lot more. It's, uh, do you see a button that says see the other 28 jetpack features? Click that. Here's all of the things that this is going to get added to your site. Some of them are turned off, and I'll explain why in a moment. But uh, there's a bunch of things here. And if you click on the name of one, it'll tell you, well, what is this? Beautiful math. Latex is a powerful markup language for writing complex mathematical equations. So if you need to write, you know, this alien language right there, you can do so. <laughs> Numbers. Square roots. So, um, if you need to write complex formulas, you can activate a feature, carousel. Uh, you can create these full screen galleries and so forth. So notice all of these. You can act as you hover over. You can also activate them one at a time, and you'll get these features or just select them all and activate them. I don't recommend you activate them all, however. You don't need all the features, and the more things you activate on your WordPress, the more resources are used. It could slow down your site. It could make it more cumbersome. So if you don't need that math feature, just don't, in, don't activate it. Uh, you don't need the contact form. We already got contact form 7. Custom CSS. This is going to allow you to write CSS code a little easier than what's built in. I like this one. Um, what I'll do is, let me see here, I'll make some notes here which I like. Uh, Jetpack opinions. These are the ones that I, that I usually myself activate. Uh, carousel, custom CSS, extra sidebar widgets, Say optional gravatar hover cards. Um, okay, so carousel is nice looking graphics, custom TSS, easier CSS editing, sidebar widgets, more widgets. We had the text widget, we had the calendar widget. This will give you more of them, like showing your, t your Twitter tweets in the sidebar. 
showing your Facebook posts in the sidebar. Hover cards. Uh, this will be. You can say it. Um, you can call this uh, user user profile pictures. If a person has their user profile set up on Gravatar, their picture will show up when they post. So if you've if you've got if you've posted something to your blog and someone replied, it'll show their picture instead of just a generic icon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so so if you create a Gravatar, your your name, your your entity can follow you throughout the internet, which could be useful because then you're building a you're building a, a brand. Is it like a blog? Is there a no, it's more of a place. It's more of like an identity platform, uh, and that just means create an account here, and wherever you post on someone's blog, your identity follows you. So you build this reputation. Based on your email. It's based so on your email. Gravatar. It's just a site that stores a picture or a graphic about you. A little bio information, and it's about you, and it kind of follows you online to build a positive reputation. <laughs> or negative. Yeah, or negative. It's really ones that you want to choose. <laughs> you can pick your. Uh, yeah. You can pick one, but but you know, add your own photo. Take a take a selfie, and then add it to your gravatar, and then you've got a better picture. Uh, infinite scroll, that one's optional. I hardly use it, but um, so infinite scroll will uh, you you're writing your blog and you've written you know ten articles. Mm -hmm. Infinite scroll is that someone looks at the first three or so and then they scroll to the end and then more appear. They scroll to the end, more appear. That's in contrast to the classic next page, previous page, previous page. This is you keep scrolling and your stuff keeps showing up. So it's optional. I usually don't use it, but it's interesting sometimes. So it's new wave view more. Or let's say page two. What else? Um, this one is optional, and this one has been really helpful for some clients, but not as much anymore. Mobile theme. This is going to create a mobile-friendly version of your site. I'm saying it's optional because most of the time, the theme you select nowadays is already mobile-friendly. If you've got an old theme that you can't give up for some reason, if you paid $5,000 for it, and I'm not, I'm not going to give it up because I paid $5,000, but they never designed it as mobile-friendly. That could be hurting, shooting you in the foot. If you don't have a mobile-friendly site nowadays, a site that looks good on a mobile device, that could be hurting your, your views. This extra feature of Jetpack will turn any theme mobile-friendly. Not amazingly customized and not amazingly like your design, but mobile-friendly, enough for it to help you with the search engines. turn a non-mobile friendly site into a mobile friendly site. Oh, What's that? Mobile theme. Yes. So I've used it on at least one client that uh, for whatever reason the theme can't be updated so we're making it mobile friendly this way. Okay, sharing, that's a good one. That's a definitely required one. Uh, sharing, allow you, allow easy social media connection. Someone visits your site, they see a great product that they like. Well, they want to share it with their friends and family. It'll activate the Twitter button, it'll activate the Facebook button, <coughs> Pinterest. Whatever this will allow people to easily share on social media, and then th therefore they will be a free cheerleader for you, free marketing for you. They will get your message out to more f more people, their friends and connections. I thought that that was um, when I do a post for somebody, 
That one is publicized, but that's another useful one. I think uh, it might be another one to activate down here in a moment. Uh, that's sort of like when you post your own article, send it to your own social media. That's publicized. Yeah, you can attach the sharing button right to your home page, and therefore they click that, and it'll share the whole home page. There's many other short codes in here. I'll say that one's optional. I hardly use it, but I can definitely see its use. The short code embeds. So that's for making a custom short. It's a list of more embeds. Like here's the code to quickly share a YouTube video or a Vimeo or a sound. They're all listed right here. Oh, no, like generic, like well, generic. Uh, yeah. Like your Twitter. Use this short code to automatically show a Twitter timeline. Use this short code to automatically show an Instagram photo. Use this short code to, to show the Vine video right on the page and instead you set of. Set up all your uh, passwords and usernames somewhere else, and then you just put this short code in. Yeah, you still need those other systems, those other networks, SoundCloud, Jetpack, whatever's listed here. Google Maps, you need all of that set up, and then when that's set up, you use the short code here to show it on your site. Share other site content. This one I, I often, uh, the next one here, site, uh, site verification. There it is. Verification. This one I often make it. Uh, a requirement for a client. If you take my uh, Google, if you take my, if you take my SEO class, search engine optimization, one of the things we do early on is to set up Google Analytics, Google Search Console, and Bing Webmaster Tools. We set up the search engine tools and we connect the search engine directly to your site. In order for you to do that, you need to verify that you are the owner of your site so that the search engine can find your site and rank it better and all of that stuff. One of the quick ways to do it is this way. We activate verification here, we go through the process, and then now your site will be found a lot easier by the search engines. So I'll say on that, for connecting with search engines easily or easier. And then site maps, that's another required one. For the search engines to find your content easier. A site map is basically a collection of everything that's on your site. Everything that's on your about page, all of your products, every link on your site. We submit the site map to the search engine so that it knows everything about your site. So when someone searches something, it says, oh, I've got a site with those keywords. Here it is. And your site could show up. So sitemaps. Yes? Probably a good one to put in. Sitemaps used to be really easy to create, but there are so many options for them now. We're probably just better to yeah, I definitely say that in, in the other class that that's true. These can get these nowadays can get so complex and especially if we're actively blogging, it's more complex to make a sitemap by hand. So I definitely recommend any sort of plugin or software to do it for you. Tiled galleries, that one's optional, just more ways to show graphics. Widget visibility. Um, this one you can decide if you like it or not, but um, what widget visibility does is it lets you, on a case-by-case -case basis, add widgets to pages. Right now, all widgets, any widget, appears in the sidebar of every page. But if you want to show a particular widget in the sidebar of a particular page, it's the widget visibility. Let's show a widget on a certain page. So 
So you're going to say this calendar widget only shows up on my about page and nowhere else. Or this video that I've got as a widget only shows up in the uh, on the products page and nowhere else. Are widgets always in the sidebar? Pretty much, yes. Uh, and you might have a sidebar on the on the left or the right or the top or the bottom, multiple places. Let's see, data backups. So this is a paid version. This is one of the ones that uh, you definitely have to pay for. I don't know the price. I haven't looked into it. It's probably good, but this is another way that makes backups. Instead of you manually uh, setting up the uh, duplicator, you can pay for this, and it'll make backups for you automatically, store them securely, and then you can bring your site back. Duplicator is not a uh, automatic the one that we've got, the free one that we've got, Duplicator is not is not automatic. But you get the pro version and then you can have automatic backups. And they can back up to your Dropbox, to your Google Drive, OneDrive, etc. So you can still make Duplicator I haven't used that one to really make a good opinion. I've used Duplicator free and pro and I like it. This one might be better, but I don't know really anything about it. Enhanced dis distribution is a good one. How can we be grayed out? These are grayed out because we have not activated our jetpack.com account yet. So we'll do that in a moment. All these other ones that we can use, we're not connected yet to wordpress.com yet. After we connect, then we'll have all of these extra features. Uh, enhanced distribution, just more ways to share. Send your posts and products off to more places, <coughs> Twitter, Tumblr, whatever, to get more views. <coughs> uh, if I don't mention anything about one, don't worry about it. Uh, monitor. Monitor, I want to say it's optional. It might be more hassle than it's worth. Let me, let me tell you in theory. Monitor is going to, uh, WordPress.com is going to check your site. Is it down or is it active? So it will monitor your site. If your site has crashed, if your site is inactive or, you know, it's, it's down, uh, WordPress.com will send you an email. And it'll tell you your site is down. And then it'll send you an email when it's back up and it'll tell you how long it was down. That sounds really good. Now the problem is, depending on the on the service that you bought at a provider, if you bought like the most affordable, also known as the cheapest version of service at GoDaddy, Bluehost, whatever, you're going to get that monitor telling you kind of often that you, your site is down. Because those kinds of sites with the lowest price are going to take your site down uh, somewhat regularly-ish because you're using the cheapest one. They might take it down at 2 in the morning for 10 minutes. They might do it, you know, at 6 in the morning for 5 minutes, just to kind of reset resources or something. So when I activate this on most of the clients that I work with, and most of them are working with the most affordable level, I'm seeing a lot of times now behind the scenes, oh, GoDaddy's down again for 2 minutes, Bluehost is down again for 10 minutes at 3 in the morning. So if you've got one of the more expensive providers, that might be useful because I'm paying the, the $40 a month for 99.998% uptime. And this is going to tell me, and if I build up these emails and tell Bluehost, hey, you've, you've been going down this often, here's the proof. And I say, oh, sorry, here's a free credit or something. So this is a double-edged sword, perhaps. I don't activate it as much on clients simply because I know I'm going to get this notification too often. It's just the nature of it. So this checks if your site is up. That photon, I like that one. Uh, short answer speeds up your site. Long answer is it takes your graphics and uploads them to WordPress.com. WordPress.com is a big, fast server. 
and so it can send your graphics to people faster once it makes a copy of your graphics on WordPress.com. Pros and cons are now your graphics are on someone else's site. So you have to decide on that if you'd like that or not. I like that. You know, the stuff that we put online for the clients is stuff that we want people to see quickly, so that's fine. But if it's your own personal site with your own personal writings and maybe you don't want that getting around everywhere, Photon does that. It sends your pictures to WordPress.com and then it sends it out to the rest of the world faster. Am I making copies of your pictures? Basically, it's a CDN caching system. What else? Uh, protect, I think, is a good one. Uh, actually, that one may be a double-edged sword for some people. But protect... Um, uh, makes more secure logins. So when you're trying to log into your site, remember that every single site is named something like victor.com slash wp-admin. Every, every WordPress site has that front door that you can get into, wp-admin. Um, therefore, the bad guys are going to guess, is this a WordPress site? Let's send our spider, let's send our robot to that address and try to log in. And it'll keep trying and trying and trying and trying, it's slowing your site down. Turning on protect will notice, oh, this person tried to log in seven times, let's shut them down now. They're a spammer. The double-edged sword is, you might forget your password all the time. And you're trying to log in, failed. Log in, failed. I think I got it this time. Log in, failed. You're logging in too many times, it'll lock you out of your own site. I believe you can tell it how many tries. I think it's three tries, maybe five tries. And then it'll lock you out for a little while, like an hour. So if you remember your own password, this is a great feature. If you keep forgetting your passwords, you're going to get more frustrated because it's going to lock you out of your own site for a period of time. Publicize. This is what we mentioned earlier. I recommend this one as well. Uh, share your posts to your own social media faster. So I wrote this great article on Victor's Bakery, uh, top 10 alternatives to sugar, and I want more people to, to read that. And I've got 50 friends and family on Facebook, and I've got 90 friends on Twitter. I would want them to see this. So when I'm writing that article, before I click publish, I activate. Also send this to Facebook also send this to Twitter. And when I click publish, this will do that. It'll publish it to my WordPress site and send it off to my Facebook and my Twitter, Pinterest, etc. That This does assume you've got a Pinterest account already set up, or Twitter, Facebook, whatever the ones that are listed there. You've already got those set up and you've already logged in into the system and then it'll send them to you. Once you log in, it'll remember, and then in the future, it'll send it off. But that's the two sides of social media. Letting someone else share your stuff to their friends and connections, and you yourself sharing your own stuff to your friends and connections. That's one of the many things we talk about in the SEO class, so there's a free tip right there. You're not getting traffic because no one knows you exist, so share your work to friends and family. They will help you publicize it, reach more people. Just one, another one, I'm sorry. Um, you can't use Instagram. No, Instagram is a special one because only the, through Instagram you can only share to it through the app. Yeah. It won't let you share through a web interface. Um, related posts. This is. Um, I'll put that one under optional, but uh, if you're a blogger, I would make that a recommendation, which is uh, related posts. Uh, show more of your posts to more people. 
I've written, I've written 10 articles on my blog. And someone found that article on Twitter. They, they came to read that article, they read it, and then WordPress will show them, would you also like to read this one? You might be interested in that one. And then the person reads one more article on my site. They're done with that article, and then it suggests to them, you know, four more. So they keep then on your site, and they keep reading your, your posts. And one of, the, one of the things that we want is stickiness. Not stinkiness, stickiness. We want stickiness. We want to be sticky in that we want people to visit our site and get stuck on it. Not in a bad way, but we want them on our site. We want them to be there, to read one thing, read another thing, come back again another day, read another thing. We want them stuck to it. One way to do that is with this related posts. You read that one? Why not also read this one? You might like this one too. And the point of that is, well, if I'm an author and I'm trying to make money from my blog, the more that they stay on my site, the more articles that they read, the more I, I could profit from my blog. That client, Texcoco, they're a Mexican food restaurant. They sell food. There's a button that says order now. But there's also blogs. There's articles about the food. You read an article, it's interesting, I want to try it. I'll click buy now. So in theory, they read one article about the food, they read another one, they read another one, they're hungry, there's the buy button. So keeping them on your site longer. Stickiness. With related posts. And the other ones are pretty optional. Well, actually, maybe one last one. Site stats. I like that one, although... Just one moment. Site stats. Uh, I like that one, although the Google Analytics is way better. That's out of the scope of our class here. But site stats, which is data about your site traffic. Knowledge is power. And once you know, I've written 12 articles, and these two are very popular. Once I know that, I can go back and add more to the article, maybe to guide people more to buy something. I've done that plenty of times. I've seen for a client that that article has really taken off. I'm going to go back to the article. What else can I do to capitalize on that? I'm going to put a link to buy this. I'm going to put a, a link to read that. I know people are going there, so I'll take advantage of the crowd. You had a question there? See? Nope. Oh, yeah, so that would be a good optional one. Subscriptions, if you're a big blogger and you're writing a lot of articles and you want people to subscribe to your blog so that they get a notification. Victor's Bakery wrote a new article. It'll go right to their inbox with the subscriptions. Yeah, your per, your own service provider often gives you some basic stats. Mm -hmm. GoDaddy, Bluehost, all of them. They give you some basic stats. They're still in there. It's kind of the the recent GoDaddy changes have kind of moved things around, but there's still stats in there. Mm -hmm. But definitely, Google Analytics and, and Bing Webmaster tools are way better stats, even better than these Jetpack stats. Mm -hmm. But I personally, for clients, I activate them all. I activate Google Analytics, Google Search Console, Bing Webmaster Tools, and Jetpack stats, just to get as much data as possible to keep track of everything. Justify our, our fee. Get people to subscribe to your blog. What's that? There's Google Analytics and Bing, uh, Bing uh, Webmaster Tools.
Okay, so um, the ones that are not active become active once you have clicked at the top here, Settings. At the top of the screen you'll see Settings. And then, oh, where did they put it? In development mode. I think also because we're in development mode, we can't fully set it up. But once this gets uploaded under settings, there should be a button that says connect with WordPress.com. We're not going to go through that whole process together. But you can go to WordPress.com, create a free account. You don't have to use it at all. You just need a WordPress.com account. Once that's set up, under the settings of Jetpack, you click the button. Connect with WordPress.com. It'll connect, verify, and then all of the ones that are deactivated here will become activatable. And so then you can get all these great extra features. And just to keep this here, I'll say how to use, create, a free wordpress.com account install activate jetpack click jetpack settings and then uh, uh, verify with wordpress.com and then after that, you get all those options that are, that are grayed out. They will become active. Now all features are active. All right, so we'll take one more break, <clears throat> and uh, when we come back, we'll talk about some other advanced things. Uh, it's uh, we'll take a short break this time. It's three oh three. We'll be back at three ten, just a little bit, about seven minutes, and we'll come back and look at some more things.